welcome back to another exciting episode of our software deployment series. Today we are deep diving into the intricate world of preparing for the MSI packaging process. Understanding application dependencies is a crucial step in the MSI packaging process. It's like ensuring you have all the necessary ingredients before cooking up a masterpiece. But beware, it's not always a walk in the park. Identifying these dependencies can be intricate and time-consuming, demanding a grasp of the application and its requirements. File dependencies, registry settings, require software and hardware specs. These are the puzzle pieces that we need to put together. File dependencies are like the building block. They include DLLs, executables and other files that an application needs to function. This must be captured and bundled in the package. Registry settings play their role too. Applications often require specific registry keys or values to operate correctly. These settings need to be documented and integrated into the package. Now, when we are talking about software prerequisites, these are quite crucial. These are components that your application relies on in order to function. Think of databases, web servers and runtime libraries. Document and include them in your package as a prerequisite. And let's not forget hardware requirements, specific processors, RAM or graphic cards. Now these are essential prerequisites for your application's performance. By thoroughly understanding and documenting these dependencies, IT professionals can cook up reliable and efficient installation packages. Staying up to date with tools and technologies is key as automation can streamline the identification and inclusion of these dependencies. Advanced Installer comes to the rescue. It simplifies declaring dependencies in the MSI package. If we open up Advanced Installer and look at a certain project that we have here open, this is a blank project, and navigate to the prerequisites page, as you can see, we have multiple types of dependencies that we can add. First of all, Advanced Installer offers you the possibility to add predefined prerequisites. These are prerequisites that Advanced Installer knows about and you don't need to do any extra steps apart from clicking what you need. For example, let's say that your application does need the .NET Framework 4.7.1 and as you can see you have two options, you can use the full installer or the web installer. But let's say I want to go with this one. Once you click it, Advanced Installer automatically can download the, the prerequisite and include it into your package. So let's say I want to download it, right? This is getting currently downloaded directly from the web. And now it's added into our dependencies. Uh, as you can see, you can also customize the download and extraction folder. And if we check further, we have multiple other configurations that we can do. For example, you can choose the location or even download it from a URL. This is already predefined in this case. At the installation, we can have the full UI or you can have the silent, right? Uh, you can also add a customized command line, conditions, you can schedule it, you can reboot the system and so forth and so on, and conditions, right? For example, you can uh, declare this to be available only for 64-bit uh, Windows versions or 32-bit version Windows. Um, you can always install the prerequisite or you can install the prerequisite based on conditions. Again, this being a defined prerequisite from Advanced Installer, we already know where to search if this prerequisite is already installed. But this you should do with each and every prerequisite that you have. Apart from this, apart from the full list of prerequisites that Advanced Installer already offers, you can add, for example, a new executable package that you have, right? So for example, let's say this app finder is a required application, right? Uh, as before, you can customize the installation, the command line and so forth and so on. Uh, you can add a new Windows installer package if you want to change multiple MSIs, right? And again, uh, customize the installation and conditions for this. And you can add a package from a new URL if you have this or you can add a new Windows feature bundle. Now, what exactly is this? So let's say we have our workstation for Windows 11 and let's say that I want Hyper-V to be enabled uh, on the machine. The hypervisor and the services and the guarded host, I want to be enabled uh, 
on the particular system where my application is installing. You can do this with advanced installer only with a few clicks. And we have tons of other uh, available Windows features here depending on the version of the workstation or server that you want to use. In the upcoming chapters, we'll explore working with conditional statements and the intricate world of working with dependencies. But wait, there's more. Brace yourselves for the world of application compatibility assessment. Compatibility assessment ensures your application works harmoniously on the target system, preventing glitches and downtime. It's all about making sure your application is a good match for the system. This involves scrutinizing the system requirements and dependencies. But there's a twist. Per user versus per machine installations. This is a critical choice for IT professionals. Per user installations are like personal suites. The apps only available to the logged in user, perfect for individual tools. Per machine installations on the other hand are communal. Everyone gets access and it's great for the enterprise environment. Each method has its perks and quirks. Per user is user friendly and of course it doesn't require administrator access to install the application but this brings a hassle to manage in an enterprise environment. Per machine grants wide access but might be more complex and requires administrator access. Now let's talk about EXE installers. How do you know if it's an embedded MSI or directly an, an EXE installer? Process Monitor comes to the rescue. It helps you track down these hidden MSIs inside the executables. First, you need to download Process Monitor and set up some filters. If we check here, we have downloaded Process Monitor and we can start it. Of course, it will require administrator access. Now, when you first open it up, chances might be that the capture process is already run. But as you saw in my case, because this was already configured, some filters were applied. So if we go to filter and again filter, you can see that the process name is VLC. Now we can remove this. I don't want this to happen. We can go to operation is process create, and then include, we add this and we click OK already this started to capture something. For instance, during VMware workstation installation, Process Monitor might catch the MSI exec service in action, revealing the embedded MSI. So let's try to install it. I have here a trial version, so let's double click it. And as you can see, the MSI exec service started. This is the embedded MSI that is inside the VMware installation. So you might already guessed it. The VMware executable has two prerequisites for the VC++ redistributable and the MSI for the actual VMware Workstation Pro. If you found this video informative, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like and share it with fellow tech enthusiasts. Stay tuned for more tech insights. Until next time,